my new Octolindo S Model Deluxe Octave Mandolin. And you may have already seen some videos of me playing this here on the channel over the past few weeks, but I've been really having a lot of fun playing it and I wanted to share more about it here in this video. Now this is actually the first octave mandolin that I've ever owned or gotten to spend an extended period of time with, but I have been looking for one for quite a while, especially an affordable one. And this one popped up over on the Mandolin Store's website, the amazing place that you guys have all heard of over in Nashville, Tennessee. It was affordable, it was gently used, so uh, Tabitha and I decided to make this crazy day trip where we drove six hours to Nashville, picked this thing up, and since then we've been putting it to good use. I actually used this thing to track four songs on the new Foreign Landers album, Traveler's Rest, which is coming out on November 12th, 2022. Check it out, there's a link in the description below. Really happy with how all these songs turned out, and uh, it's been so fun using this instrument in this setting. But anyways, I've had this thing for a couple months now, and I just wanna show it off a bit more in this video and share my experience with you guys. If there's anyone else out there interested in this particular type of octa mandolin or is looking to buy another one, I hope this video will be helpful or entertaining at least. And uh, for this video, there's no sponsors, there's no endorsements here. I bought this thing with my own money, bought it used, and um, these are all my opinions. So uh, without further ado, let's jump in and talk about the specs of this thing. Now these Octolindas just popped on the scene earlier this year, and this one itself is only dated April 10th, 2022, so it's six months old as I'm making this video today, but they're made by the mother company KR Strings with Luthier Kylan Reese down in Hawaii. So if you've been in the mandolin community for a while and you're familiar with octave mandolins, you probably know that there's a few different types out there, right? First, there's like the giant F model style octaves that folks like Lover Mandolins have built. You may have seen Sierra Hole playing one of those, absolutely crushing old danger field. Check out that video in the cards above. And then there's also the really popular arch top guitar body styled octaves that you've also seen folks like Sarah Droz play. She's got a Fletcher Brock octave. Northfield makes those as well. And KR Strings makes an Octolindo arch top as well. It's kind of semi arch top where it's mostly flat, but it does have a floating bridge and uh, you know a tailpiece down here at the end. But as you can kind of see, this is a third type here. It kind of just looks like a guitar, right? It's got a flat top, it's got a sound hole. I've heard some people affectionately refer to these as gitzukis, as in a cross between a guitar and a bazooki. But I think bazookis usually have a much longer scale length. And it's even smaller than a guitar. In fact, I've got Tabitha's triple O small body guitar here made by Luthier Leo Posh for comparison. And you can see, you know, just side by side, this thing's a lot smaller, both in body width and in depth, as well as scale length too. The exact measurements here are nine and three quarter inches here on the upper bout of the body. Then on the lower bout here, this is 13 and three quarter inches. And then the total body length, I believe is 17 and a half inches which as far as I can tell is a little bit smaller than the measurements of other octave builders out there like Northfields for comparison. And I actually like this. It feels really cozy and doesn't seem like it takes away from the sound. So for the wood on this thing, we have an X-Brace Engelmann spruce top. And then on the back and then on the sides here, we have this really beautiful rosewood that if I'm honest was a big selling point on this thing for me. It just looks so, so nice. Another kind of shallow reason why I love this thing is this beautiful dark orange sunburst that's accented the really nice kind of blonde maple binding here. And uh, I don't know, I kind of think it matches this room perfect, don't you? Here we have a custom pin bridge, and this one takes ball end strings, which is kind of nice. It gives you a little bit more options for string gauges if you want to mix and match different strings from guitar sets. I haven't gotten to try too many different strings yet. I've mostly just been playing these Mandolindo octave strings. If anyone is interested, they've got them on the website, and the gauges for this set are 0 0.046 for the G, 0 0.032 for the D, 0 0.022 for the A, and 0 0.012 for the E strings. Then over here on the neck, we have a very slightly radius fretboard that's made of ebony. Got these nice bigger kind of guitar style frets, which I like on my instruments. Very simple appointments on the neck itself too. You know, just really beautiful little mother of pearl dots. Then we also have a bone nut, which measures 1.38 inch in width, which also feels really nice to hold. The scale length itself is 21.5 inches, and that's a little bit longer than some octaves. I believe Clark octave mandolins are a bit shorter, but this is shorter than the Northfield octaves. It's a fair bit shorter than the Brock octaves and a few others out there as well. So it makes for some pretty comfortable fingerings with the left hand. I find myself not having to use my pinky on the fifth fret as much as I thought I would. 
and I mostly just kind of stick to my normal mandolin fingerings. Gotta love these three fingers. <laughs> All right, and here at the end of the octave, we got the headstock, which is kind of a unique shape. It's got pretty simple appointments over here, no binding, very simple black finish, very subtle octolindo headstock inlay here at the top. And then we got a discrete truss rod cover here at the bottom. And on this side, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of these tuners. I think they're open gear Grover tuning machines and they just kind of look cheap. Uh, the buttons are very plasticky and the metal back here looks, you know, almost like it was sprayed on. And they do an okay job of keeping the instrument in tune, but I will say that they're very sensitive. So just a slight motion on one of these tuning knobs, especially on the thicker G and D strings, will just send this thing way out of tune. And lastly, on the spec side of things, I've made a couple of additions since I've got this thing. And uh, firstly, I put in a pickup here in the end pin. And I wasn't actually sure what type of pickup to use for this thing. You know, should you use a mandolin pickup since it's an octave mandolin or a guitar since it's got the guitar body? And thankfully, I was able to get a hold of a rep at k, &K and they recommended putting their pure mini guitar pickup in this thing, which usually has three transducer elements, but they recommended taking one of those elements off and just using two, much like the k, &K twin pickup that I've got over here in my Piteous Mandolin. I think it was a great idea because this thing sounds really awesome plugged in. You know, I've gotten to play this a couple times live. I plugged this straight into my Grace Felix preamp and just with a few EQ tweaks, it sounds really natural. You know, there's none of that heavy mid range or heavy pick thud that you would expect from a pickup. It almost sounds like a mic. Another addition that I've made to this thing is the installation of this strap button here at the bottom of the neck. And that's one of my complaints about these instruments is that they don't come with an end pin or a strap button at the beginning. So there's no way of attaching a strap to these instruments right out of the gate. I guess you have to make cuts somewhere if you're offering an instrument like this for such a low price point. But um, I feel like that's an important feature for, for most folks in terms of usability and playability, especially from more of a professional standpoint where you're on stage quite a lot or you're standing up at a jam. I don't know, I kind of wish that they included that. But honestly, they're not crazy difficult things to install on your instrument. I did have a trusted luthier put this pickup and end pin on my octave here. But to save some money, I put this strap button on myself. You know, I just bought a $5 Dunlop strap button and a drill bit and um, it's the first time I ever did anything like that. I felt a little bit sick seeing the saw does come out of it, but uh, all things went according to plan, thankfully. <laughs> so those are the specs, but more importantly, how does this thing sound? And uh, I think it sounds pretty darn good, but you listen for yourself and see what you think. I got to compare this octave to a few other octolindos, including the semi-arch top ones that they offer, as well as a few other octave builders. And for some reason, this one really spoke to me. I don't know, I just really like the mellow, darker tone, the more sustained that you get from the flat top and the sound hole. Just suits what I do with Tabitha and our Foreign Landers project really well. You can play all sorts of stuff like Irish music. I've been having a lot of fun playing some classical music on this thing, some banjo style music as well, all sorts of stuff that you can do. And I haven't gotten any setup work done on it since I've got it, but uh, I don't know, it felt really good from the start, you know, it plays really evenly up and down the neck. The only issue that I've had is sometimes in the middle of the G string, there's a bit of buzz, but that could be something with the setup or the string gauges that I'm using. So I've got to figure out what that is and sort it out. So stay tuned. But overall, it sounds great. And even though it's an affordable instrument, it doesn't feel like a cheap instrument, if that makes sense. It almost feels like a custom guitar. And uh, I've enjoyed getting to do some more guitar-like stuff on it for a change of pace. For instance, unlike a regular guitar, you can actually finger pick this thing and it sounds pretty good. I mean, now I got to figure out how to finger pick too. <laughs> Thank you.
I've also been having fun with the forbidden fruit of the mandolin world, the capo, right? And uh, it's generally not acceptable to use a capo on a mandolin, but on the octave mandolin, it's all fair game. And it makes transposing to different keys so easy, getting different sounds and different tones higher up the neck. It's, it's almost too easy. <laughs> say that I bought the wrong capo though. I bought a guitar capo which is much too wide for the neck on the octave mandolin and uh, I'd recommend getting a five string banjo capo, one that you can use on the fifth fret and higher. You know, it's just wide enough to work with this particular nut width. Recently I did a weird thing with this capo for a video where I tuned down the entire instrument a half step and then capoed up to the first fret. So it was the same tunings but the scale length was just a tiny bit shorter and the string tension felt a bit looser for a fun change of pace. Although I will say it was a bit confusing because the dots were one fret off and it was uh, hard to play what I wanted to play, but it's a trick that a lot of tenor banjo players use and it was fun getting to try this out on the octave as well. Another guitar thing I've done is messed around with some different tunings and one of my favorites has been tuning the E strings down to D. So when you finally get in tune, the tuning should be G, D, A, D which I think is a common tuning for bazooki, so it sounds really great on Irish tunes in the key of G, the key of D, and I ended up going with this tuning for, I think, three of the four tracks on that Foreign Landers project that I mentioned. So uh, to sum things up, here are some overall thoughts on this Octolindo S Model Deluxe Octave. And the biggest attraction I'd say by far is something I haven't even mentioned yet. It's the price point on this thing. These are listed for $26.50 USD on the Octolindo website, but I got this one used for just under 2K. And the only other cheaper option in the Octave Mandolin market right now are some of those mass-produced octaves that you see from Eastman and Trinity. And while Octolindo is outsourcing some of the manufacturing labor overseas, you can tell that they're doing it on a much smaller scale just because of the attention to detail that you're getting in this instrument. And I think, uh, especially for this price tag, you're getting a much better valued instrument and playability as well as aesthetic than any of the current cheaper options in the octave market. You know, I think the next price tier for octaves runs around three to 4K. And then when you get to some of the more custom boutique builders out there, you're looking at 10 to 12, maybe even more. So I think Octolendo is really filling a gap for folks who are looking for affordable yet quality octaves. And I think that fact alone makes up for any of the superficial qualms that I have, like I said earlier about the headstock or the tuners you're really getting a great bargain. And I really do like the overall aesthetic on this instrument. You know, I think the sunburst is beautiful, the wood and the binding is just lovely. The appointments are simple, but beautiful, nothing gaudy. And I'd say the comfort of this instrument has also been a big factor in my enjoyment. It doesn't feel like you're having to hunch over the body of the instrument like I have to do with the big dreadnought guitar. It feels very accessible. The left hand is really easy to. Being able to use these three fingers is a big pro in my book. And lastly is playability. You know, I think anyone who plays the mandolin is gonna pick this thing up and have a really fun time. You know, it sounds great, it feels great. You may not get all the subtle nuances that you're getting with a $12,000 octave mandolin, but for someone who's looking to get their feet wet in the octave mandolin scene, I think this is a fantastic option. But let me know what you think. Drop a comment below if you also play octave mandolin, what octave mandolin you're playing if you have an octolindo as well, and if you'd like to see more octave mandolin content like this here on the channel. And stick around for some of the other videos that you see here on screen. If you liked what you saw here, be sure to like and subscribe this particular video. It goes a long way to making this channel possible. You can support the channel even more by joining over on Patreon at the link in the description below. I know a lot of you folks are already patrons already, so thank you so much for your contributions, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one real soon.